and welcome to Facing South Florida. With so much going on at home and around the world these days, my guest this morning is in a perfect position to talk about just about all of it. Eliana Ross Layton is the longest serving member of Congress from South Florida, and she finds her way into all sorts of issues, big and small. And we love having her come in and share her insights. And so, Congresswoman, thank you very much for coming in. Well, thank you so much, Jimbo. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here with you. Thank you. So let's, I want to, I guess I want to start with what's been in the news most recently, Ebola. I know that you serve on a subcommittee that covers the northern part of Africa, not necessarily West Africa, where we're seeing all this. But still, I wanted to get your thoughts as to this crisis and how serious a threat do you think this poses the United States? And I'm sort of weaning that the media may be doing a little bit too much on this. What's well, so thought? far we only have, uh, at this taping time, one, uh, one confirmed case in Dallas, a possible case in, uh, in D.C. Everybody's aware of it, monitoring it. Uh, I think our health care professionals now are a little more prepared for what could possibly happen because the Dallas victim, after all, had gone to the hospital, said that he had been in one of the uh, uh, West African nations, in this case Liberia, and, and then was sent home. Now I don't think that that is likely to happen. People are really, uh, because of the media frenzy, they know about it and and yes it's true that some some countries in Africa have barred entry to anyone from those affected countries whether it's Sierra Leone Liberia uh, Congo etc but I don't think we're at that point yet it is true that our US government is able to bar entry uh, from countries in fact during the latest uh, Gaza war uh, the FAA suspended all flights uh, to Israel, so not not for disease, but because of, of risk. So we have the right, we have the responsibility to do so once it gets to that stage. I'm not sure we're there yet, and I think that our health department is, is so far superior than any of these West African countries, I don't think we're at that threshold where people should be panicking. How, what role should the United States play, though, in helping those countries in Africa combat this disease? Should we be sending U.S. military forces, supplies, resources? I know the CDC is playing a large role, but should that be expanded? And is that appropriate for the U.S.? Well, I think the United States, there's no country like our great country. I mean, the, the fact that we are sending thousands of troops to these infected uh, areas, and they're already there. We're spending already allocated $175 million dollars uh, and this is taxpayer money and and it's not our fight but yet we are that kind of neighbor to all afflicted countries so our troops are there we want to make sure that they get the best health care we want to make sure that they get properly screened and uh, the the risk of this contagious disease spreading to our troops is real so we can't put them in harm's way uh, in order to protect folks from another country I don't think that's the role of the US military we can aid we can support uh, uh, but we cannot build a complete health care structure that is totally lacking in these West African countries. Surely that is not our responsibility. I did read recently that there was some analysis being done about CDC funding, Centers for Disease Control funding, and NIH funding, National Institutes of Health. NIH, of course, trying to come up with a cure for Ebola. Both of those agencies, because of budget cuts, have fewer resources than they have in the past. You know, it's uh, CDC and NIH are a couple of those agencies that you think about that you know can easily get fall off the radar until you really need them. Should we be doing more? Should we be spending more on both these agencies? You no, know, I don't think that there would be one federal agency that could tell you, Jim, we have enough money to cope with anything. And and only in Washington, a a stable funding could be considered a cut. But, but that's what it, that's what is happening in every one of these agencies. Probably their funding, I'm not sure, but probably it has gone up. But they consider it that they don't have enough resources. That would be true for the FBI. That would be true for the FAA. That's true for FEMA. And they're all important agencies, but we have also worldwide organizations, the World Health Organization, and the UN has a lot of institutions that are able to help. It should never be just up to the United States. We're always the ones that people say we're not doing enough. Certainly, the video, the shots that you see from these West Africa countries, they're heartbreaking because people are literally dying at, at outside hospitals. The hospitals can't let them in. So we have a responsibility, but we're not the sole responsibility. We help people in need. Those agencies will never have enough money and they'll always say, you dirty dogs in Congress, you cut our budget. Uh, there's never enough money when you deal with a health hazard that could be potentially this big. Uh, let's change gears a little bit. This is 